Here is a summary of the story, The Address by Marga Minko. The story begins with the narrator of the story standing at the door of a house, speaking to a woman who had answered the door. The narrator had travelled some distance to meet the woman. Even though the narrator introduced herself, the woman did not show any flicker of recognition. The narrator wondered if she was at the right address. Just then, she noticed that the woman was wearing a cardigan that had once belonged to her mother. The narrator was now sure that she was at the right address. The woman, however, refused to speak to the narrator and closed the door. The narrator looked again at the address just outside the door. It was what she remembered. As she walked back to the railway station, ignoring the familiarity of the streets, her thoughts went back to her mother, who had given her the address. One day, the narrator had returned home to find many things missing from their house. On inquiring about it, her mother told her that an old acquaintance, Mrs. Dorling, had turned up suddenly after several years. She had offered to safeguard their prized possessions during the war. The narrator's mother had felt rather obligated to Mrs. Dorling for taking such a big risk. The narrator then remembered the only time she had seen Mrs. Dorling. Mrs. Dorling had been on her way out of the house with a packed suitcase and her mother had briefly introduced the two to each other. It was then that her mother had told her Mrs. Dorling's address, number 46, Marconi Street. After the war, the narrator had had little interest in the objects that had survived the war, unlike her loved ones. She had no longer felt a connection to them. However, when things had returned to normalcy, she had decided to pay a visit to Mrs. Dorling. After her unsuccessful first attempt, the narrator decided to go back again. Mrs. Dorling wasn't at home, and her daughter let the narrator into the house. On entering the house, the narrator was shocked to see the room full of things that used to be in her house before the war. She felt as if she was in a place that was familiar and strange at the same time. It was almost suffocating for her. Mrs. Dorling's daughter offered the narrator some tea, which she accepted. In a daze, the narrator struck up a conversation with the girl. She remarked how beautiful the things were and how one tends to take one's belongings for granted until one loses or lends them. She remembered how her mother had once made her polish their silver cutlery. She asked the girl if their cutlery was made of silver too. But when the girl started to check, the narrator sprang out of her chair and decided to leave without meeting Mrs. Dorling. She realized she did not want her mother's belongings back any more. Now that she had seen them in an unfamiliar setting, they did not hold the same value for her. Besides, she reasoned her new house was too small and shabby for exquisite antiques. As the narrator left, she confirmed the address once again. It was number 46, Marconi Street indeed. But she was determined to forget the address and never return. She wistfully realized that of all the memories she had to erase from her mind, an address would be the least difficult to forget. Thank you.